This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant of the Apostle, Lord Jesus Christ, ministering globally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas. Sit back at your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. Now that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to the scripture, he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Amen. That is the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I want to welcome everyone saving this broadcast, a live stream, Roku, other devices. Thank God. To my right, co host, Jerry Brown, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. To my left, co host, Kathy Davidson, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And on the wire, Colorado, co host, Kathy Kerr, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. I have an exhortation if you would like to hear it. Well, I want to hear it. All right. If you will turn with me to Genesis 3. I'm going to sh show uh, something about the Lord. It says in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, um, this is talking about Adam and Eve. They have just sinned. And it says, The eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Amen. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. But look at verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Right here, we see that God walked among his children, that he came to talk to them. In fact, it says the next verse, it says, And the Lord called unto Adam, Where are you? Where are you? God walked with Adam. That was his desire. Why? He was one of God's children. He was a child of God. He was a son of God, if you read Luke 3. Now, turn with me to Exodus 29. Exodus 29, I'm going to begin in verse 43. And this is God speaking to Moses about the children of Israel. He said, And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And I will sanctify both also Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. Why? And I will dwell among the children of Israel. Amen. And I will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Why? That I may dwell among them. Did you know that that was the desire, that that is the desire of the Almighty God is to dwell with his people? That's his desire. That's his desire to dwell with you. God's desire is to dwell with you. Now, turn with me to, let's go to um, John 17. Well, I, I will bring up another verse, and I had to look it up real quick to make sure I got it right. Isaiah 59.2 tells us why it can't dwell with us. Isaiah 59 59.2 says, But your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and your God. Amen. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Amen. God can't dwell with us because of our sin. He can't. But his desire is to dwell with you. Amen. So what did he do? He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus. Amen. Turn with me to John 17. Amen. This is a beautiful chapter. This we get to, by the grace and the mercy of God, we get to listen to a prayer that Jesus is praying to the Father. 
Jesus is now getting ready to go to the cross. Amen. He has lived three and a half years on the earth. He is getting ready to lay down his own life. And here he is talking to the Father. And we get to hear it. We get to read it. Now, I want you to notice one thing for some of you. Jesus is praying to the Father. Jesus is not praying to himself. There are some that believe that Jesus and the Father are the same person. Then who is he talking to? It makes no sense. All right, now, uh, I'm going to begin in verse 20, because this is where it talks about us. Now, Jesus is speaking to the Father. He said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's us. The words of Peter and John and the apostles and the apostle Paul. It says that they all may be one. That means all agree together. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That God can dwell in us. It says, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. Can you imagine being one with God? That's his desire. That's his desire for you. To be one with him. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them. Thou hast sent me and hast loved them. Who's the them? That's us. The Father loved us, so he sent us Jesus. Why? So he could dwell with us. And Father, I will that they also, which thou hast given me, be me with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, that thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And thou hast known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. Why? That the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them. Did you know that the Father wants to love you just as much as he loves Jesus? Read it. The Father wants to love you just as much as he loves Jesus. Isn't that comforting? Folks, it's not Jesus and the Father that's resisting us. It is not them resisting us. Father sent Jesus so he could love us and dwell in us just like he did with Jesus. I'm going to finish with John. Um, let's go to John 14. And I'm going to read verse 23. If a man love me, he will keep my words. This is Jesus speaking. And my Father will love him. Amen. Why? If we keep Jesus' words. What words? Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Repent and believe the gospel. The gospel is because the Father loved you. He said, if the man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. Amen. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We have Amen. a Father that wants to dwell in us and with us. How do we get there? We believe what, Je what the Father sent. We believe Jesus. We believe that gospel. Okay. And that will bring us to where the Father dwells in us. Amen? <laughs> The 
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. I want to give everyone an opportunity to be born again if you're not. Or saved, same thing. Or receive Jesus in your heart. Same thing. But Kathy D is going to read John chapter 3 where Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. What an honor to read this chapter. John 3 verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Amen. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and now here is the sound thereof. The cannot tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, Amen. even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Amen. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Finished. Amen. Thank you. Now, all the people that are saying this online, we're going to keep you too. We're going to keep speaking to you. And if any of you out there want to be born again, receive Jesus, be saved, you can do it right where you're at. Amen. And the spirit that I minister and the anointing that I minister will go right through this mic, right to your ear, Amen. right to your innermost being to receive Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, Terry, are we going to, is this going to be recorded just as I am? Yes. Okay. You'll be singing with it. I'll sing along with it, sure. Okay. E everyone's welcome to sing along with it if they want to. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep here. Is this not the best seat you can give me? <laughs> Hallelujah. I forgot what this place was like. Are we ready? We're ready. Let's go. Just as I am. <clears throat>
Tell all of you, relax. Don't be afraid. The Lord's not going to hurt you. He's going to give you a peace that passeth all understanding. Jesus will go into your heart if you let him. But you want to you have to want him to come into your heart. Believe that he's coming into your heart and save you or join with your spirit and be one spirit. Jesus, sanctified, raised from the dead in you. What power, what enjoyment, what can anybody get except they believe? We're going to do this song again. If you want born again, if you say, I am born again, that'll be fine. You just might receive some more faith, more spirit. We're not going to get out of this building until, oh, I mean, we are today, but until the great appointed weeks of the harvest takes place. This could be the beginning. The anointing is here. I was anointed at the tomb of the garden on June 16th, amen, 74, amen. One, Acts 1 8, and I'd be a witness in Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So let's do this song again, okay?
when he opened their hearts that Jesus can be received into their heart. Amen. Amen. Friends, don't be afraid. Don't think that you're not worthy to get born again or to receive Jesus. Don't ever let the devil tell you that. You know, he may be standing right beside you saying, you're too wicked to be born again. No, there is no one unworthy. No one too wicked. It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters not. Jesus Christ died for all. Went to hell for all. Rose again for all. And he paid the price that you could not pay. Amen. My goodness. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I wonder if we can have he paid a price. He paid a debt he did a not debt. owe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's do. All right. This is serious, folks. Amen. Sing it live. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. You okay? I'm doing well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Cause Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. My debt he paid upon the cross. He cleansed my soul from all its dross. I thought that no one could all my sins erase. But now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Cause Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Oh, such great pain my Lord endured. When he my sinful soul secured, I should have died there, but Jesus took my place. So now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He did not give to me alone. He gave And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Thank God He paid a debt He did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Cause Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Amazing grace, Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt. 
debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Paid a debt that I could never pay. Takes care of fear. Don't be afraid that you're not worthy. You are. He died for everyone. Not a good one and not a bad one. All. Look, if we would have been obligated to get ourselves right to be born again, be saved, none of us would have ever made it. Amen. None of us. You're worthy. All you have to do is be here and hear these words and accept them and say in your heart, Lord, I accept you. I believe you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to serve you. I want to do your will. Amen. Now, I want one more song. Just as I am. Okay. That's the way you are. Right. You don't have to be ready. You don't have to be anything. Without you... one plea. Just as I am without one plea. Yeah. Speak it. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Amen. Amen. Well, thank God. Let's do that song. And bless all of you, and I want to pray at the end. Thank you. 
Call us at area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Laurel Davidson at Post Office Box 941925, Plano, Texas 75094. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 941925, Plano, Texas 75094. This program was paid for by Water.